Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the major changes that they brought in this latest command update of 1278.1, which you can pick up on the command form if you're looking to kind of get kind of in on the ground floor, so to speak. So it's a couple different updates. So the first update that I want to show you that I'm really, really super duper majorly happy with is they changed the mission editor to make it have more room to work. This is awesome. So what was different before is you kind of had everything kind of crammed on one of these little teeny tiny windows. And you know, you come down here and kind of do one of these things, trying to like fits with it to try to get it right. And you just could never quite get what you needed on the screen. So what they did, which I think is super clever, is they came up here and they actually broke this apart so that you have like a whole page for mission settings, which you can now do stuff for. And they have a whole separate page for targets that you can uh, go ahead and concentrate. And they've actually changed some of the language down here to make it much more uh, easy to follow. And I think it's a really, really awesome change. So woohoo. Uh, the second thing, and this one has some interesting implications, is they implemented changes to the way that Horizon is calculated. Now, it's not that the world has changed size, it's just that when you look at some equations as far as the propagation of electromagnetic energy in an atmosphere, you discover that, sure enough, they behave differently depending on the scenario. In one scenario we have, of course, if we just were to go ahead and look out with some binoculars, we're not going to be able to see as far as if we look with a radar signal, because radar signals, when you shoot them over horizon, they'll actually hang on to the horizon a teeny tiny bit, giving you an enhancement in the maximum range that you can actually detect something. So to show you what this looks like, if I actually were to click on a unit real quickly here, hit that one, go switch over to line of sight mode. Let's go ahead and lost tool here. And we'll go ahead and set this to an 80 foot target. And you'll see exactly what our rough radius is. It works out to be something like 19, 20 miles if my math is correct, right? Now watch what happens when we switch from a radar ESM horizon to an EO visual horizon. See what happens? So what's really going on here is the typical horizon is actually at that distance about 12 nautical miles. However, because of the propagation of the radar, the way that that's been mechanically evolved, simulated, we actually can detect things over the horizon with a radar, but we can't with a visual sensor. So what does that look like practically? Let's kind of take a look. So what's going to happen here? So what I've done is I've spawned in a little aircraft and I've sent them down super duper low to about 80 feet. I've also set up this little uh, generic watchtower. <laughs> Nothing too crazy here. But on our watchtower, we have a variety of different sensors. We have good old fashioned spotlight, binoculars, radar, everything under the sun. So what I'm going to do is flip on the radar. Now in the previous model of the way that this information was transferred, was that we wouldn't be able to detect this target until they got within, say, 10, 11, 12 nautical miles. Now we're going to be able to pick up the target to the distance of the radar, just like we calculated a minute ago. So let's go ahead and unfreeze time here. Give us a little bit of multiplication and give it a second. Any moment. There it is. Perfect. We'll grab it and we see we detected them at about 19 nautical miles, which is about what we expected, like I said, between 19 and 20. Of course, keep in mind, you have to be able to identify that target. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna continue monitoring this target. And again, every five seconds, we get a quick update because again, that radar slowly turns around, taking five seconds to sweep the sky. It's gonna continue traveling towards us. Now watch what happens. We've detected them on our air search radar, but we have no visual fix on them yet. They're gonna have to cross the traditional horizon, which we calculated about, there it is. At about, uh, what did we say there, 11, 12 nautical miles? Go ahead and pause for a second here. And you can see that next, we've gone ahead and not only acquired them on our radar, but we also, for a second, if you spotted it as it went by, is we've now gone ahead and picked them up on our generic IR camera. And we've also picked them up with our eyeballs here, you know, kind of the generic visual. Now, the interesting thing is because we had such a powerful IR system, we were actually able to identify this aircraft pretty much instantaneously at that distance. We're also able to kind of identify some other features with the exception of altitude, which is gonna take a little while longer to be able to calculate based on that angle. So you can already see that this could have a major implication on the way that radars work. Now you suddenly have the ability that traditionally you can kind of get between radars real carefully by just flying super low. You can still do that, but your ability to do so has been seriously adjusted because of that change in how far that radar horizon is calculated. Other than that, enjoy.